Hi, my name is Kuranda Mitsutake. I'm a director of Karate Kill. You're watching 13th Wolfman. Woo! Hey everybody, I'm the 13th Wolfman, you know what, it's another great sit down, this time I have the director from Karate Kill, uh, Karando Mitsutake. Yes, hi, <laughs> great to be on your show, thank you. Katrina Lee Waters, you might know her from the WWE or TNA as Wimpy, our pop virtual sister. Hello. Hi. And Kurt Geiger. Actor extraordinaire from this movie who plays a great nut job. Welcome to sit down, you guys. Hey, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this Karate Kill. What a what a fun movie. Where, uh, Karanda, where, where did this idea come from? Well, uh, this was kind of a, a assignment for hire, actually. Uh, this Japanese independent producer Naoki Kubo hired me uh, to make this uh, up-and-coming new karate guy, Hayate, um, next, he, you know, a star. And uh, uh, Hayate happens to be the real uh, karate guy, and his karate is kind of an indigenous um, Okinawan karate, you know, the karate before karate kind of thing. And uh, so, yeah, I just, uh, I, I talked to uh, Hayate extensively before the movie, uh, before the script, and um, I kind of tailor-made the script for this guy. Cool. Yeah, I, I saw a lot of, I mean, in the early parts of the movie where he, where he first came across the, the, swords, the first swordsman at the club, yeah. I saw a lot of Bruce Lee in him, hmm. you know, with, with the way he was with the way he's moving and just little little things so i i think he's gonna go far um, yeah i hope so yeah so do i uh like i said it's a fun movie katie katie gets to play uh so she plays a bad person <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> 
How how did you get involved in the in the assembly of this? Um, well, it was a good old fashioned audition. So I submitted my my headshot and resume for the part, and then uh, I got invited to audition and got invited to the callback. And I guess uh, Corinda thought I was right for the part, which you know, luckily for me, because I love playing her. So, do you like playing bad people more than more than the the goody goodies? You know, I I do generally because it's it's just such a, a release kind of thing, you know, it's an outlet for my evil twin sister to come out and play when in normal life I kind of keep her under wraps, so it's, yeah, it's really good fun. And I think that you can tell, too, that, you know, in the film, I feel like that Samoa, she doesn't, she's not just evil, but she really, really enjoys being evil. You know, yeah. I really enjoy playing that, so. Well, well, one thing I thought was kind of funny about the movie is that the, the movie is essentially in in Japanese. Mm -hmm. You know, but whenever, whenever the hero would say something to like, like Kirk or, or Katie, they re, they they would just say yes, uh, and that that bitch is gone now. You know, it's like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> right. They 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 kind of communicate in a different level. <laughs> yeah. The conversation actually works. You know. It did work though. I like that. Good. Good. Yeah, Kirk. Right. Uh, yeah, it's about it's about what forty uh, percent English, sixty percent uh, Japanese kind of thing. But uh, you know, it, uh, my philosophy is you know good good action movies. You, uh, you can just turn you know you can you you even don't have to understand that language. Yeah. So you know, I, before, before I could speak uh, English, I uh, I watched uh, uh, Paul Verhoeven's Robocop. Uh, without the subtitle, without Japanese subtitle, it was before Japanese release, and uh, I totally got the movie. So you know that that kind of became like, um, you know, my philosophy for uh, action movie directing too. You know, it's like you don't you don't need to understand the language; just watch the movie. You know. Right. Yeah, I mean, it was just kind of interesting. I it, we, we could watch them try to say it in, in you know a bad dialect or something, but it worked, and <laughs> it. I just figured, you know, they just knew it. It's like it, 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 this this nut job of a, you know, is only hanging out with people that actually knows that language. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and to get to you, Kirk, uh, I I kind of saw. I, I don't know if this was intentional or if you if you when you created the the idea of. The, I saw a lot of Manson in this. That was actually in the role description, um, Corando's description. So, yeah, in my research, I did a lot of Manson research, yeah, a along with a, a bunch of other, uh, you know, freaks <clears throat> that we kind of dropped li little things in. But I, I saw that he wanted Manson, so I went physically with that, and then we added some other characters, kind of sprinkled some other evil within that. Uh, but I, I uh, felt that was his parameter that he was looking for. Yeah, and the weird thing is, is that where... And not trying to get off the subject or anything, but most of us, most people that have those have those kind of followers are very charismatic. Right. Yeah. I didn't get yeah. that with this guy. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you, if you, I did some research on cult leaders, and, and one of the main things is, is, is narcissism. Um, so I looked up narcissists and started doing research on them, and then I took my favorites and sort of built them together, and then hopefully some of those peaks and valleys showed up. Um, but yeah, this is a. Uh, He's, he's got some Hitler issues. There's some anger. He's got the, there's some problems there. Uh, I, I think hopefully you, you, you gathered. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, like I said before, it's a fun movie. It's one of those movies that, um, well, like Carando says, you don't really need to understand the language. It, it, they do a great job putting the subtitles in there. They leave them up there long enough for you to read them, which is great, you know, for slow readers. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a fun movie. I saw I saw a little Jim Jones in the character. Yep. Yep. You yep. know. Yeah. Exactly. I figured yeah. I, I, I kind of started with uh, you know the actor Michael Shannon. Yeah. Well, you know, they, you know Vandinsky's baseline for me was Michael Shannon after a half bottle of liquor and a parking ticket. That's kind of like <laughs> where he starts. <laughs> And there can be levels of, you know, other things, but there, you know, at the least, he's at least that. <clears throat> That's uh, what we're shooting for. So, 
for the act for, for all of you when making this movie what was the hardest part of the movie for you to deal with let's start with Corando. well um i guess it's the budget issue you know it's uh, it's uh, it's a low budget japanese uh movie shot in la um so you know we our budget was little shy of uh uh 250,000 and uh, we only had 18 days to shoot in LA and one day in Tokyo and um, uh, you know we, within that time uh, limitation we had to do the action sequences then we have to do the uh, acting sequences um, so you know if uh, if I wanted to spend more time on action um, acting scene ended up getting short and uh, if I wanted to do more performance scenes um, spend time on that, um, then the action scene had to be shortened. Um, so that was kind of a catch-22 um, problem that I had on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so the budget and time um, were the hardest hardest part of the making this movie for me. Yeah. Katrina? Um, I'm kind of hot pressed to find something that I didn't like about the production. Um, I'm going to have to say the weather, if anything, it was a bit hot, and then a couple of days it was a bit cold. Um, other than that, it was a really amazing experience. I really loved everything. I love working with Kurano because he really he knew exactly what he wanted from us, but at the same time, he was he was giving us so much freedom to play and to really embody these characters and, and go for it and, and find more nuances and things like that. So I don't know. It's really. Quite honestly, one of my favorite productions I've ever worked on. Thank you. So I really have nothing bad to say about it at all. <laughs> oh, no, just, I wasn't, I mean, oh, it's I wasn't yeah, expecting yeah, was to say yeah. anything bad about it. Just, you know, like, like you said, the right. the hardest thing was the yeah. weather or, I mean, you know. But then again, it, I mean, if you're thinking about the, the hotness of the sun, you know, for me, it was so easy compared to, like, what the stunt guys were going through and how you actually were going through. I mean, they were running up and down, jumping over vehicles, you know, all kinds of things that they were doing. That was, I mean, that was challenging. You know, I really got up easy compared to those guys. What about you, Kirk? Uh, I, I agree with Carando. It was the timing. I mean, if we had a little bit more time, I think we could have, you know, there's a few things that we couldn't didn't have time to film uh, that were fantastic that he wrote that I'm sure he's frustrated we didn't get to film um, and that I was frustrated we didn't get to do uh, that and then there's a there was a lost in translation sort of thing there going on because Karando is speaking to everybody in Japanese for the most part and I realized that a I need to learn Japanese um, I just very frustrated not know because I like to like kind of be in on a little bit of everything so I can sort of you know project the performance so missing any sort of uh, direction to camera or anything really helps the actor. So there'd be times where he'd finish things that I'd walk over and be like, Karanda, was that anything? He's like, just technical. It's not, don't worry about it. It's not like, okay, cool, cool. But you don't know that. You know what I mean? It's like, that, was that important? What happened? What was that? <laughs> that would be my only sort of frustration with time and, 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 and missing some of the dialogue that I'm sure was amazing. Wow. Yeah, we, uh, I guess, I, you know, going back to the, the time, uh, restriction thing you know it's like we 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 couldn't necessarily translate everything to everybody so and also you know bilingual pas were uh, hard to come by sometimes and you know um because everybody all all the crew members were wearing you know two three different hats you know doing stuff so may, maybe the language barrier thing here and there popped out um but uh, other than that, I think uh, I think everybody um, communicated all right, and uh, you know uh, we worked as a well-oiled machine to uh, get the movie shot in eighteen days. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there's a there's a there's a fight scene towards the end. Um, it's kind of funny. Like the fight scene takes place at a eight by fifty-three mm. foot area. Um, and honestly, until until you go to the long shot, because I don't want to give away what it is. <laughs> I didn't. I, I want people to see this and know what it is. But but uh, I didn't realize that you were actually inside. You know. No. That, I, I don't know. Maybe we can reveal reveal what it is. Uh, 
But uh, yeah, it's it's actually in the twelve wheeler uh, truck. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I did just I thought it was such a cool idea because when you did when you did follow the way to the launch, I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know. I just thought they were in a warehouse somewhere. I didn't realize that, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, this uh, this was an idea that was given to me by a uh, Japanese, a uh, very famous Japanese actor, uh, Masaya Kato, uh, who did the cameo in the beginning of the movie. He's the he's the delivery uh, company owner of one of the one of the job that our hero Kenji uh, quits uh, in Tokyo to go look for his sister in L.A. But uh, um, you know he's a, he's a super famous actor, and he um, he's he br befriended me for uh, uh, several years now. And uh, um, during some uh, lunch uh, we had together uh, several years ago, he told me about this idea that uh, what if this illegal Fight Club esque thing is taking place in a, a behind the twelve wheeler truck, and it's a it's kind of a traveling show, traveling. Uh, underground fight club and um, so that idea uh, was stuck with me and uh, I asked him to uh, you know give me a permission to use his idea in Karate Kill and he, he happily gave it to me so um, uh, yeah so it, it, that, that, uh, that's how it materialized yeah and that was very cool I, like I said I just I, did. I, I, I loved everything about this movie I love well, one thing, I, I'm i a big movie fan, but I'm a big Italian horror movie fan, so I like foreign film. I like a lot of foreign stuff, so that's why, I, you know, the subtitles don't really bother me, you know, but I, I like to see the, the, the ideas that come from somewhere else, because we get a lot of the same stuff over here, you know, I mean, and it just seems refreshing to see something fester from somewhere else, you know? Right. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, Jap Japanese cinema stopped producing kind of a campy action movies. Um, you know, the uh, big, bigger budget stuff started to become more uh, rom com, and uh, uh, you know, we we they do still make um, you know maybe a horror movie here and there with the big budget or a Godzilla movie stuff like that. But uh, you know, uh, they stopped making big budget karate movies, uh, martial art movies. And, um, yeah, I was, I was really happy to, uh, be given this chance, even though it was a low budget, uh, but to, uh, you know, give nods to, you know, Sonny Chiba, Street Fighter, S, yeah. you know, like that, that realm and all, whole bit. So, sorry, Kirk, what was you going to use? Oh, no, not, oh, you said you used the word fester. I just thought that was perfect for what you were talking about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I, I get it. I, I got the Sunny Shiba type thing, you know. Street Fighter, sis, sis, Sister of Street Fighter, Return of Street Fighter, all great movies, man. Right, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, uh, well, let's let's get to how you, how you any of you got into the acting business. So let's start with Katie. Or, um, Katrina, I'm sorry, Katrina. Yes. I, um, I, yes. No, I, I, no, nothing. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think doing bits and pieces since I, since I was little, like when I was about eight, I actually, I was in the children's chorus at our local theater. That was, you know, my first job, if you will. Um, so ever since then, I loved being on stage. I loved, you know, being in school plays. And then after school, I studied film and drama at university. And then I'd gone to London to, you know, pursue that. And I somehow um, happened to see a British wrestling show. And thought, oh, let me try this as well. And then I started training, and then sort of the, the wrestling took over a little bit <laughs> for a few years. And then until I ended up in WWE, and once that ended, I thought, okay, let me go, go back to doing some more acting, because I really missed that. So, and then I came out to LA. That's kind of nice, though. I mean, you, you, you fall into, I mean, you started out as an actress, then you fell mm -hmm. into fell into wrestling so it kinda helped out with your with your developmental you know, your development of your characters because you got that acting background. Right, I like to think so, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Kirk? Uh how to get in uh a bit uh, kind of a default. Uh, my parents and 
my brother and sister, we all auditioned for a, a community uh, theater thing as kids, and we all got cast. And about three days into the rehearsals, I realized I did not like a bunch of people staring at me for a couple hours. So I quit the play. And I think I was, probably, I was about eight, too, I think, Kat, somewhere around eight, nine, something like that. So for the rest of the run, my whole family's on stage. I'm out in the theater in the seats watching them rehearse, watching a director, watching for, for the whole run. And I think in that time, sitting in the seat by myself, watching it happen, a frustration grew and started to fester. Um, <laughs> And it took me a while, but then, yeah, once I, I actually moved from New York to San Diego midway through high school, and they had acting classes in, in, in high school. So I immediately joined and started doing uh, speeches and, 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 and uh, plays. And then, again, uh, I went to Cal State University and studied theater and, and then just started auditioning and, and started booking things. So probably did out of you, you know. Did your family take it any farther? Uh... I get no, they didn't. They didn't. They really didn't. That's fun. They did a few productions at that time. Um, I ended up doing one after that uh, as I started getting over myself. But no, they kind of dropped it, and I picked it up with a full. But I was watching films too, and I'd be watching films, and I'd see actors doing something, and I'd go, "Wait a minute! Not only can I do that, I'm pretty sure I can do it better than that guy." So <laughs> with that in the back of my head, you know, and then you know, do a little bit of training, but started finding out that you know I could walk and talk. And uh, just kind of kept pushing it and growing and, and, and uh, hopefully still pushing it and growing. Carando? Uh, well, uh, what, my acting or am I directing? How did you get into the movies all together, man? Because oh. you've, got, you, you've got a I looked your credits up. you got a lot of stuff, man. Right. Um, well, my, uh, my, my acting career started off accidentally. I, 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 I don't act any longer. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, I was on Heroes and, uh, uh Ugly Betty, um, but, uh, that was, that kind of, uh, came out of a, a bar conversation with my, uh, one of my great friends who's a working actor, and, uh, he, he told me, um, my agent is looking for somebody like you, and, uh, <laughs> uh I think you should go meet him, and, uh, you know, I didn't believe him, but uh, I did, and, uh, actually this agent signed me on. And um, I guess it was the kind of a beginner's luck, you know, that um, it was like second audition or something that I went on um, for Ugly Betty and got the part. I, I guess that part was originally offered to um, George Takei, and uh, he had a co schedule conflict or something, so they opened it up to Japanese actors, and uh, then I got the part. So, but uh, then after that, I got on the Heroes and. Uh, yeah, but you know, um, now I, I love directing. I mean, that's that's my focus. That's uh, hopefully that's like my my career. So I, I stopped acting for for several years now. But uh, uh, but my you know my my second movie, um, Samurai Avenger. Um, I, I played the main character and directed that. So that was when you know when you were younger and stupider, you know, kind of thing. But. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but I, I ah uh, youth. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And uh, well, I, I I wanted to become a movie director ever since I was um, probably nine or ten. Um, I saw uh, Steven Spielberg's The Duel uh, on TV, Japanese TV, and uh, I just uh, got you know possessed by cinema, if you would. So then that's yeah. I, I know that feeling. I, I mean, I've been, I've been obsessed or possessed by cinema since I was a kid, too. I mean, I remember watching horror films with my mom when I was, like, five. You know, uh, it just, it's been a, it's in my blood. They say that, you know, guys that race cars, the fuel's in their, you know, their, they, they would bleed gasoline if they could. Well, I would bleed celluloid, you know? <laughs> you know, I hear you. I hear you. You know, so... Now, now I got to go back and watch Heroes. Oh yeah, I, I'm I, I season two. Uh, you know the uh, there's a storyline that the hero travels back in time. Right. right. Yeah, I'm the I'm the bad guy named White Beard. I, at that time, my beard wasn't white, so <laughs> they had to give me the fake white beard. But now I can actually play the character with no makeup. <laughs> 
You, know, you hand you the little Santa beard with the strings, and there's nothing. <laughs> he gave me this funky strip of white beard, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, got it going. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I have that season on DVD and so. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm there. Uh, season two, uh, episode two and four, three and six, or something like that. In the in the in the beginning. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, well. I know we need to get started setting up for the live show, so I'm gonna have to wrap it up. But uh, if um, anyone's trying to find you on the social on social media, where uh, where can they find you, Kirk? Uh, well, you can find me at Kirk Geiger at Twitter, um, also Facebook. I have a, a website, dogcatbirdproductions.com. Uh, my wife and I uh, developing some screenplays. It's got some acting stuff, some writing stuff. But uh, it's kind of long, but you shouldn't be able to forget it. Dogcatbirdproductions.com. Okay. <laughs> Katrina. Uh, so I'm Katarina's Infamy, pretty much everything. So at Twitter and Instagram is Katarina's Infamy and Facebook.com forward slash Katarina's Infamy as well. And Corando. Uh, I'm on Twitter at mcorando. And uh, uh, Facebook, I think you can just find me find my personal page or the professional film director's page uh, under both Crando Beat Stacking. So. And I gotta say to the people that are watching, uh, that are, are going to be watching this, uh, you definitely gotta see Karate Kill. It's worth it. It's fun. It's camp It's a little campy. Um, but it's a good time. For Kirk, Karando, and Katrina, I'm the 13th Wolfman, and I'm on the, pr and I'm on the prowl. <laughs>